Welcome to this Let's Play Rule the Waves 2 with Germany, done really small. In this episode, I think we've got two problems. First of all, we're going to start a war with France with our Italian allies. I think that should be comparatively straightforward. The only complicating factor is the second problem. I've been lumbered with a 6,000 ton foreign station requirement because of my unexpected conquest of Morocco. I thought I had a reasonable grasp of the needs of foreign stations, but it appears that playing Rule the Waves 2 very small adds a complicating factor. Let's take a look. Here is my current fleet, and as you can see, I've had to put one of the Victoria Louises onto station in West Africa. They're on active fleet, that's fine. Being on active fleet still counts for your colonial commitments, so long as they are in the area that requires the colonial commitment. However, if I only had the Victoria Louise, that wouldn't be enough. So I've had to put one of my Weissenburg battleships onto foreign stations, and that wasn't enough. So I've had to put three destroyers onto foreign station to finally to make this tonnage on foreign stations go to OK. Now, it shouldn't have been like that. It should have been that the Victoria Louise in and of itself should have been enough to cover that requirement. That would have been true if we'd been playing at one of the larger sizes. However, something odd's clearly going on here. So I've worked up a little spreadsheet to help out here. Now, like any spreadsheet, it looks a bit complicated, so let me just deconstruct this for you. Down here are the various types of warship I'm considering. The black are ones I've already designed. The blue are various concepts that I'm toying with. Next is what type of ship it is, how much it's cost to build, what it looks like if I build a certain number. Let me just turn these to uh, zero. There we go, and that one. The actual tonnage of the ship involved. Then over here is in the pink, what impact does that have on our colonial requirements? Now in this first column is what it usually should be, certainly is when I'm playing with very large fleets. And it's based on a set of rules that I've copied out here. Three rules. First of all, if your ship is 6,000 tons or under, but hasn't been fitted for colonial service, you, when you're playing very large, would just get the displacement of that ship. So, for example, a 500-ton destroyer would count against 500 tons of your foreign service requirement. If it's over 6,000 tons, it gets more complicated. You get 4,000 tons of your displacement and then one-third of your displacement added on. So, for example, 14,000 ton battleship, like our Weissenburgs, would be 4,000 tons plus a third of 14,000 tons, which is 4,667. So, 8,667 would have been the total that I would expect. If your ship is fitted for colonial service, either of these two rules gets a 1.25 modifier. So for example, a 6,000 ton cruiser gets its 6,000 tons times 1.25. So it becomes effectively 7,500 tons. Now, under these rules, our Augusta Victoria would have been worth 7,433. But in this game, very small, it's only accounting for 2,601. So what the heck is going on here? So I did a pile of little calculations here, which uh, you don't have to worry about, but the key figure is this line. It appears that my expected colonial tonnage modifier is being adjusted down to be only 0.35 a third, call it, of the size that I expect. And that's true of the battleships, it's true of the armoured cruisers, and it was also true of the destroyers, which is why I'm having to commit so many more ships to fill 
what would otherwise be a comparatively trivial 6,000 tonne requirement. I mean, to put it in context, when you play very large and you're the Royal Navy, your foreign station requirement is something like, if memory serves me right, 171,000 tonnes. So this is what this pink column is. The final is, if I build X number of ships, so if I build two of a small colonial cruiser that I toyed with that would only have a displacement of 3,200 tonnes, but because it was fitted out for colonial service, uh, if I build two of them, that would satisfy my 6,000 tonne limit. I have to say, I haven't put figures in for these blue ships that I haven't built yet. I expect them to still be worth the amount shown here, but it's quite possible that this uh, 0.35 modifier is applied to them as well. I'm just not sure. In the yellow set of numbers, you get various constructions. So first of all, the design time. So you build any new ship, it takes a design time. Now, some of these are set to zero because I've already designed them and they're in service. If I was to take one of my Gila class cruisers, of which I'm building one already, and fitted it out for colonial service, it's just a trivial thing, it would still take two months to design it, and that would cost this extra 1,370. Then, in this column, you've got how long it takes to build. And then finally, what that monthly build cost would be. In this total cost, I multiply how many ships I'm going to build against all of these various costs to come out with a full figure of how much all of this looks like. So, for example, I happen to know that if I was to create a colonial version of the August Piper, which is a design I've already done but haven't built as a minesweeper. I happen to know that if I build eight of them, assuming that the calculation is still true and it's 600 tons becomes 750 tons because it's being fitted for colonial service, then eight would fulfill 100% of my requirements. Hooray. It would take a month to design for 161, its build time is 10 months. Each month it would cost 161 to build each of them, so the total cost would be 13,041. If I was to build one of these Ida Zeeps, I happen to know through experimentation that six of them would be needed, assuming this figure is true, and that would cost a total of 10,000. Likewise, this Carsten design which is a 1,600 ton colonial gunboat, if I built three, that would generate enough. And that would cost only 8,594. So using different styles of Corvette, I can generate different savings. The Ida Zeeps, by the way, I've done as a classic 900 ton design because that's the most optimal ASW figure. If you actually lowered that down to 800 tons and, and lowered the armament down to four inch, I think it has five inch guns, you would get quite a bit of a saving, but still not huge, not enough to upset this kind of calculation. Equally, if you built either of these two colonial cruiser designs, they would be fine. But as you can see, the cost is hugely more. So what then to build? I've done this final column to show what extra worth these ships bring to the party, as well as fulfilling the colonial requirement. So with a healer class, you get two further trade protection ships. I mean, you could station them out in the various areas needed and keep them on active fleet. But if you put them on trade protection, they would be pretty effective anti-raider. They would certainly be able to deal with any protected cruiser that it came across and any armed merchant cruiser. This smaller cruiser at 3,200 tons certainly could deal with any armed merchant cruiser, might be able to deal with the bottom of the range of protected cruisers as well. The destroyers, just for demonstration purposes, because they are not providing the usual 500 tons, they're only providing 175 tons, 
you'd have to build 36 of them to fulfill the full requirement, which would cost you nearly 65,000 marks. Now, for that, you do get a huge chunk of ASW value and 36 ships to either put on trade protection or keep in your active fleet if they're based in the areas where you need your colonial requirement. But really, no. For me, given that we're very small and money is always tight, the choice is, do I go for a Karsten? Uh, three of them. Do I go for the Ida Zeeps? Do I go for the August Pipers? So it's really all about this extra worth. It seems to me that the Karstens, although super cheap, provide only half the ASW and half the extra ships on trade protection. Whereas the Ida Zeeps are kind of in a Goldilocks position. They're not the cheapest, but they're not so expensive. 30 ASW is a fair old chunk. Um, I know submarines haven't been invented yet, but I expect these ships to be in service pretty much for the, all the rest of the game. And they give you six ships towards your trade protection. Whereas the minesweepers halve that ASW value. They do provide you a few more trade protection ships. And of course, they do provide minesweeping. But for me, I think the Ida Zeeps is the nice balance between fulfilling my colonial requirements and freeing up those major fleet units that I've currently had to put onto foreign station and giving me extra benefits. So that's what I'm going to go with. So let's take this away. So let's go and design our Ida Zeeps. Now, I've actually uh, should have saved it somewhere. There we go. So it's all ready. 19 knots could be faster. It's unnecessary. Five inch guns. Hopefully that's enough to deal with U-boats and stops too many of those annoying there was a spirited gun battle and your Corvette got sunk messages. Set to colonial service, all importantly. 1873, costing 156 each. That all looks fine. It's easy to over-egg Corvettes. They only have a few jobs to do, which they do brilliantly. Don't, you know, start sticking armor onto them or uh, equipping them with heavy broadsides or any of that stuff. You're just increasing the cost when it's not really going to add much benefit. And hopefully, oh, oh an extra technology. How oh, very nice. That's our sixth one this year, so pretty healthy. Victoria Louise crew quality suffers from cramped accommodation while on foreign station. Yeah, sorry about that. That is one of the things you do suffer. Had I known that I was going to be required to do foreign stations, I wouldn't have done cramped accommodation, but there you go. Uh, the Ida Zeep is ready, so let's go to the build screen and let's do six of them. So that's got them going. I did think about the healer. It's uh, nine months left. Whether to scrap it or not and start to build a modified healer with colonial service fitted out, but I thought, no, I've got too much money invested in this. And save that. Click on the turn marker. Japanese would be interested in buying the rights to explosive shells. Well, Japan, it's a long, long way away and it's pretty friendly and we'd quite like money. So by all means, let's have uh, an extra 1100. A bit more intelligence and boom, there we go. It's war. So looking at our fleet's disposition, it's not as I would want. The Brandenburg has been sent. I would dearly love it to move back. Oh, yes. Um, it doesn't like moving ships of short range during wartime. I'm going to be honest, this whole Morocco thing has, to use a technical term, buggered me up. I had envisaged a short range cramped accommodation fleet based on solely operating in European waters and not to have them zooming around in West Africa. And I see I've got a destroyer in the Caribbean. Ho-hum. 
it is what it is. It's going to take us a fair chunk of time, a year, before these Ida Zeeps are ready. So I'm going to have to fight the French with pretty much one arm tied behind my back. Let's look at the French. So the French have two battleships and one heavy cruiser, one protected cruiser and 13 destroyers. Fair enough. Let's see what they are reported to be like. So slightly bigger. Of course, they've got 12 inches, slightly stronger, but slower. So if worse comes to worst, we can do quite a bit of running away. Armored cruiser, two 10 inches and some seven inches, I think is substantially inferior. Happy to meet the Montcalm. And it's protected cruiser, eight six inch guns, and then a whole pile of three inch guns. Well, ish. Be interested to match that against our healer once we have one. Their destroyers, of course, are classic. Yeah, 500 tons, of course, with the AI. Of course, we can fit four torpedoes on there, no problem at all. And still do 28 knots. Fine. Now, if we look at the map, zoom in, in, uh, and we do the bars, that's always useful. You can see that we are the gray, the French are the red, and we have slightly more than the French. Not sure if that's gonna be enough to blockade them, but at least that's a, a bit of a help. It should have been a lot more. So that's where we're up to. Let's press the turn marker, oh. I have no ships and I need three on trade protection. So easy to forget. Let's put these onto trade protection. The two in West Africa are still counting for tonnage requirement, but the one in the Caribbean, weirdly, isn't, even though the AI has sent it to the Caribbean. That's a, a little, little trick it likes to play on you. So I'm going to have to put um, another of these precious destroyers onto trade protect onto um, foreign station to fulfill that requirement. I mean, the other option is just to go bugger it. Let's just forget about fulfilling this requirement and put everything on. There would be a, a prestige hit. If things start to get tight with the French, that may well be a hit worth taking. Okay, save and turn, and our first battle. Cruiser battle, who knows what it's going to do. Certainly don't want to decline, because my cruiser I have a lot of confidence in. So let's see the whole uh, battle area. As you can see, it's just us. Just the Augusta Victoria, all alone in the world. So let's see who she bumps into. Unknown ship sighted. Oof. Really close. Memo to self. Remember to check the time. It's night time. Uh, quite convincingly, if we zoom out, it's not night time for very long. Let's go in here. Because we're all on our own, I'm going to put the lock on, which will keep us centered. And let's zoom in. We're just uh, outside torpedo range, which is good. I am in captain's mode, so I can control the use of torpedoes if I need to. Let's crank ourselves up to our maximum speed. And are we going head to head with this ship? I think we are. So I'm just gonna turn to expose my guns. Ooh, and there's more than one of them. Now, I sort of don't like this because I really don't know who they are. And obviously they're moving in torpedo range. That's better. Maybe one more. Okay, so a couple of destroyers. Happy if they stay outside of, of torpedo range, but inside my sighting range. So this is my sighting, this is my torpedo. So, this is one of their light cruisers. As you can see, eight six-inch guns. Um, I can't, he's not trivial, you know, I can't just ignore him. Uh, Two-inch belt, that will be fine 
for my 11s and 6s. And I have a 5-inch belt, so it should give me a degree of protection. I think what I want to do is hold off until dawn, because there really doesn't seem to be a need to risk myself against these uh, destroyers and the nasty torpedoes. But let's not do that. But equally, I don't want to lose sight of them. So it's going to be a bit cat and mouse. I mean, they might be quite pleased that they've driven off myself. Okay, here's the cruiser. Ooh, catching up on you fast. Let's turn abruptly away. Oh, ouch. Okay, turn in. And away. And away. Hooray for dawn, or at least uh, enough daylight. So now, hopefully, I can stop twisting and turning quite so much and get some good gunnery in. So, I seem to be firing at pretty much everybody. And I'd very much like to get at this protected cruiser. And so let's have a think about this. Obviously, the destroyers are going this way. And they could just as easily turn into me or turn away and follow their cruiser. The cruiser is going that way. And I would ideally like to turn in and follow and chase down the cruiser without getting in the way of these destroyers. So I could either turn this way and then this way and do a big lazy circle. It'll break contact but at least it would stop me running into these destroyers. If I went this way, I do risk running into the destroyers if they turn into me. So I think that's what I'm going to do. It's going to take a little bit of a while, and I'm going to lose some distance against the uh, French cruiser, but I think that's the best option. It would just be so painful to lose this armoured cruiser unnecessarily to some destroyer torpedoes. And this is what I wanted. So the destroyers are going to follow their cruiser. And I want to just gently get past them. I'm going to head towards the uh, Safax. This does put me behind the destroyers, but, you know, when you're in close proximity with destroyers, being behind is as good as it's going to get. have a look over here. The range is still quite short, uh, 17,000 yards. It will get better pretty soon. Speed limited to 18 knots by the weather. So it's pretty stormy. I'm going to assume that these destroyers are following uh, protected cruiser. And there it is, out into the overcast gale that is the weather. I'm uh, not hitting a lot, it has to be said. I mean, given that the range is only 2,000 yards to these destroyers, um, the gunnery is pretty abysmal. But, you know, this is 1902, and that's pretty classic. Ships can't hit a barn door. 
even when the target is going pretty straight. Not a lot going on. So the Safax has decided to come and play nice, which is good. We can just keep these destroyers out of the way. Oh, those bloody destroyers. Really jinx it around. I know this is rubbish for your speed, not to mention your gunnery. Look at my ship detail. My current speed is 12 knots because of that uh, maneuver. So there's a lesson worth learning. Oh, go away. Right, weather's drizzle, still a gale, only 8,000 yards range, which is why I can't see the cruiser. I'm assuming I'm still heading it in approximately oh, the right direction. Okay, I'm just going to carry on. I mean, this is beastly weather. Um, it's really crippling my main advantage, which is I've got much longer range guns, and I've also got a slightly faster ship but my slightly faster ship isn't going any faster because it's a gale and I can't see anything in this murky weather. So it's looking towards it's going to be a draw. We're now into light rain with a range of 3,750 yards. I mean, you know, this is shocking. I mean, it keeps on changing, but yeah, it's all a bit rubbish. Where are we in relation? Hmm. Unless the weather improves, <laughs> this is going to happen. Okay. So looking at this, we did manage to do a little bit of light damage and medium damage to the French destroyers. Let's just bring this into the center. So by medium damage, we're looking at a six inch hit. <laughs> Now, a six inch hit has essentially completely wiped out the superstructure of this ship. You know, a six inch hit could reasonably expect to sink a uh, destroyer. Let's see the other one. It's had a fair chunk of flotation damage, which has dropped its speed and yeah, another six inch hit. So, I can feel a bit disappointed because destroyers sink for a lot less than a well-aimed six-inch hit. Here, it's taken four three-inch hits, well, near misses, and managed to get one. And then finally, some more three inches. So I'm going to say the French were pretty lucky to get away with that. Let's close it. I usually just like to look at where the hell they went. All oh, right. <laughs> so they were going in the di that direction and then the weather closed in and then they went in that direction, which is kind of fair enough. And then they zoomed off over there, which is um, completely unexpected. So let's close that down. And come back to here, and we have an embarrassment of riches, a whole 65 victory points. Well, you know, every victory is lovely. Now, here the IA is tempting me to make things worse with Britain. We're already at a higher level of tension with Britain than I'd want. I could increase the tension and reduce the rebellion. I could increase the tension and increase my prestige or I could uh, take a prestige hit and not increase the tension. I think we'll do that. I think we've got enough problems on our plate with France without bringing Britain in there. Obviously, the raiding and submarine warfare is pretty non-existent. We do have a blockade. Now, if we can keep that up, then that will be very helpful. And we have more ships in the Caribbean than our base can support, even though our entire presence in the Caribbean is one destroyer. So that's it for the first turn. I'm going to leave it at this point. 
It's a beautiful example of how the game can upset you, take you away from your intended plan, throw at you the possibilities of making your life harder for yourself with War with Britain, but at least I'm getting a blockade with France, and if I can hold that for the best part of a year, then I'll be doing fine. The most alarming thing is I can't move any of my current ships anywhere because they're all short range and you can't move short range ships during wartime. Join me for the next episode of Rule the Waves 2 with Germany done really small. Thanks for watching.